What's up guys, today we're going to be taking a look at Ceres, the dwarf planet. Uh, it's somewhere up there, I'm not sure if you can see anything, but yeah, we're outside. Uh, Ceres is kind of a special dwarf planet because it's between Mars and Jupiter, which is far away, but like, I think it's the only dwarf planet that's like closer to us than Neptune, so a lot closer than every other one. And it's at opposition now, so it's like closest to Earth. Uh, it's going to be this close again in like 16 months, so we'll take the picture of it while we can. Uh, it's pretty good conditions. There's a cloud there and there, but where Ceres is, it's pretty clear. So uh, I'll briefly show you guys how we're going to find it. Uh, we're going to use the constellation, uh, I think it's Coma Berenices, something like that. And we're going to uh, kind of, I guess, try to figure out where it is from there. And the way that we're going to confirm that we have the right uh, thing, because it's just going to look like a dot, is we're gonna take a picture of it and then another picture like in half an hour and if it's in the same place it's a star if it's in a slightly different place we'll know it's uh, series so yeah here we go let's get the telescope set up and see what we could do okay quick intermission to show you exactly how I did find series in the sky because it's really dim magnitude 6.41 which is almost too dim to see even with your eye in a desert or something maybe it is too dim I'm not exactly sure but I was able to find this little cluster of stars in the telescope by complete chance and I used it to star hop over to Ceres which means for example using these two stars to find these two stars and then that to go over here and then here and then there and then all the way over to Ceres and this as you can probably guess took me a long time like 20-30 minutes but it was worth it and it's kind of fun I think uh, a few of the things that made it harder is that Ceres really does look like any other star since it's so small uh, it's brightness here is 6.41. This star's brightness is 6.71. Both of them just look like dots. The color is even pretty similar. A lot of them just look white. And the worst part is that you have to do this entire process at a telescope magnification, which is like, mine at least, is 30. And so you have to be star hopping like that. And it's really kind of like digging in the, or trying to find, what do you call it, a needle in a haystack. But we eventually did find it. And by looking at the shape that it makes with nearby stars, like a zigzag, that's the one I used. Uh, you could be sure that what you're looking at is Ceres. So I'll get back to the video now. All right, guys, here we are 15 minutes later, maybe 20, I don't know. Uh, basically, uh, I just finished using star hopping to get Ceres right in the middle of the frame. I don't think you'll be able to see it. Here's the eyepiece. Uh, you probably can't see anything. Anyways, um, yeah, I got it. There's some clouds over there. So once they pass, uh, we'll start taking pictures. I'm like, 99% sure what I have is series because it matches on my computer right up with the whole like I don't know shapes that the stars in that position should make so uh, yeah we got it now all we have to do is start taking pictures of it and so for that I'll hook up the camera and try to focus it which will be hard since it won't be able to see anything uh, but yeah uh, we'll start taking the pictures and see what we get wow that's bright anyways uh, we're just starting to get our first photos of series uh, if we take a picture here, let me cover up the light. Come on. Uh, that one right there, that's Ceres. So we have to just kind of like play with the focus until we get it right. I would use the, the mask, which we have right here. Um, but Ceres is just too dim for that to even work. Uh, that works best if you could actually like see it in the live view and just kind of twist it. But Ceres is so dim, we have to take a five second exposure and just kind of, you know, look at the result and see if it's good enough watch turn the brightness of this up so you guys can see there we go that's better series right there uh so yeah i'm just going to keep doing this until we get those point uh you know point uh until series looks like a point instead of a smudge and then once we do that we'll turn our exposure to half a second so there's no streaks and or we'll just iso to whatever it has to be and yeah, we'll just take a whole bunch of shots and see what happens. All right, guys, I think I got the focus pretty good. If you take a picture like that, it'll snap on the camera. And you can see they're good enough. So yeah, they don't have to be perfect because it's not like Mars or the Green Comet where we're actually going to see anything. Uh, it's just going to be a dot. So, you know, even if the focus isn't perfect, it's it's okay. So let's change our shutter speed to one half of a second. All right, 0.6 is good. Take a picture. 
and uh, watch. There's not going to be any streaking anymore. It's dimmer, but there's no streaking, which is good. Uh, series is not in the middle of the frame anymore, though, so I have to twist this knob maybe a bit more. Uh, let's try again. And hopefully it's better. There you go. Series is that one right there. Okay, intermission number two. The reason why I was so confident in this video about the, the little dot right here being series is because I had my computer out with me and I had Starry Night open. And you could see here, the shapes that these stars make are exactly what they should be if series is this dot. Like, you could see this and this happen here and here. And this zigzag shape happens right here. So that's why I'm so sure that this dot is series. Okay, back to the video. Um, so what next? We just have to take, uh, let's take a whole bunch of pictures and uh, we'll stack them. And then I will wait, I don't know, I'll give it maybe 10, 15 minutes and uh, we'll realign the telescope because Sirius is gonna move through the sky. We'll take another photo and when we look at the computer, you'll see that Sirius, if I actually am pointed at Sirius and not some random star, it's gonna be shifting just a tiny bit, maybe like a pixel, but it'll be enough for us to be sure that that's the one. And uh, yeah, let's do it. All right, guys, I got a little bit carried away and took like 20 pictures instead of the 10 that I promised. But um, anyways, we got more than enough. And now all we have to do is wait the 20 or so minutes for Sirius to move just a bit in the sky. So you could, you know, look at that movement. And in the meantime, I thought it would be cool to try to get a, uh, what do you call it? Diffraction spike on a star. And that's basically, uh, you know how in some pictures, stars look more like, dirty computer stars look more like that cross than the dot that we're seeing um that's because in the picture that took that it must have been like a like a reflector type telescope with a, a cross in the middle of the lens with the mirror in it uh we just have a normal refractor so uh, uh it, it's better in that way because it doesn't make those spikes but it may look nice in a picture so what i thought i'd do is take a string and put it there and there to kind of make that um that cross in the lens uh, artificially and then we'll take pictures and see if we get that crossing effect uh, just as something to do in the meantime while we wait so uh, yeah I'll get the string out and tape it on all right guys I put the string on as you can see there it makes a little cross there not a perfect cross um, I was trying my very best not to bump into the telescope and like kind of ruin it but um, unfortunately my plans did not work out perfectly as there's still no spikes on it. But anyways, we'll try that again in the future. Uh, let's just wait like five more minutes and uh, take those updated pictures of Ceres and hope that it moves. Uh, I might wait a bit longer because I do think that the pictures are slightly out of focus. Like, um, you can see they're not perfect dots there. They're more like circles. So that'll make it harder to detect um, any movement with Ceres. So we're probably gonna have to wait a bit longer to actually get anything, but I'm fine with that. It's uh, like 12 something. Let me see. Oh no, it's 1.14. So we'll wait till like 1.30 and then um, yeah, get back to picture taking. All right guys, change of plans. I see some clouds over there and I'm not sure how long they're gonna, you know, stay there for. So I'm just gonna try to take the new pictures now. I'm gonna rip off our uh, unfortunately unsuccessful creation over here. And uh, yeah, I'll snap maybe 10 more pictures, maybe 20 uh, of series. And uh, yeah, we'll call it a night. So I'll do that right now. All right, so I put all the processed photos into this folder right here. And uh, this first one is just one camera frame and you can see series is the one here. Uh, we also got some other stars like this one, this one. But all of these spots like around the image aren't actually stars. That's just, um, it's camera noise. And uh, that's basically like, uh, I think it's from heat in the sensor and they're in different places every time. So if we take like 20 shots like we did and you stack them and you kind of average out that camera noise, the spots disappear. And yeah, that's why we take like 20 pictures. And that way you can be sure that every kind of star in the image, like this one, uh, this one is a real star and not like a camera artifact. And uh, yeah, so as I was looking through this image, I noticed that I think the dimmest star in the image is this one right here. You can see that spot slightly brighter uh, than the rest of, you know, the background. And uh, so I looked up in Stellarium how bright it is and it's magnitude 12.63. I could tell that's the star because 
you see how it makes like a like a trapezoid with these other three stars and in the image it does the same thing uh yeah that's how we do that uh 12.63 and just out of curiosity i wanted to see how many times dimmer than neptune that is and you could use this uh, formula right here uh this is the the factor that one magnitude is and uh this is the star magnitude this is neptune's magnitude at its brightest and it's almost a hundred times dimmer than neptune so I just thought that was pretty cool. We could see something that dim. And uh, yeah. Also, like I told you guys, uh, the way that we could be sure that what we were taking a picture of was actually series is by seeing if it moves slightly uh, in between shots. So this is a, a stacked shot that we took uh, 30 minutes apart from this one. And you can see that it does move uh, just a little bit since it moves like very slowly, but it moves and the stars don't. And that's how we can be sure that it's something in our solar system orbiting the sun, like moving uh, close to us. And that's why it moves and the stars don't. So uh, yeah, that's our shot. Uh, this first one right here. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. And uh, yeah, see you guys next time.